It's NBC 26 at 6 and it's a snow day. Northeast Wisconsin getting a late winter blast, closing schools and causing slick driving on the roads. Plus technical difficulties, the NTSB releases their initial report on a plane crash that kills three locals in Indiana. And moving forward, state lawmakers working on a bill to try to keep Kimberly Clark jobs in the Fax Fox Valley. And good evening to you, John Erickson alongside Brooke Hayes, Stacy on assignment tonight. We start here with a weather alert. Yeah, thanks, John. Now the snow is still falling late this afternoon. Cameron, what's the latest on the storm? Well, we're still looking at a winter weather advisory from very roughly Oshkosh to Omro and then north and east. That is up until 9 o'clock this evening. And here's the reason why it's still snowing. Storm Shield radar showing a large area of snow covering just about the entire viewing area. It's mainly light snow, but there are some pockets of heavier snow working in from time to time thanks to some lake effect snow showers working in off of Lake Michigan. As we head through the evening, most areas will pick up a dusting, but a few spots could pick up another inch or so. And that's on top of what we've already seen so far today and yesterday. Sturgeon Bay coming in at 7.2. We've had six inches in Oconto, almost six inches in two rivers, and about four to five inches in the Green Bay area. So as we head through this evening and into the nighttime hours, we'll continue to see some light snow or snow showers gradually diminishing once we get past midnight. It's going to be windy out there, so we'll have some blowing and drifting snow, especially in rural areas and a lot of that wetness that was out there from earlier today as the snow melted will start to ice up producing slippery traveling back to you. All right, thanks Cameron. Now across northeast Wisconsin, public works crews were working all night into today, cleaning up the mess left behind by Mother Nature. Drivers seeing more snow late this afternoon. NBC 26's Eric Crest is live in Green Bay with the latest. Eric. We're in the first week of March and we're trying to wade out of the winter driving season and at this point in time, most Northeast Wisconsin drivers are better equipped to handle conditions like this than at any point in the year. This morning, the snow was wet, heavy, and in some places across Northeast Wisconsin as deep as seven inches. So far, a little slippery. <laughs> Uh, pulling out of the driveway was, was uh, a little fun. The main roads are fine, but the side roads are slick. Snow plows across Brown County were working in full force over the evening and into the day, attempting to make the drive as doable as possible. There's spots that are going to uh, crop up, uh, especially some of the local streets and whatnot. And that's always one of the things drivers got to watch for is those changing conditions. But most thought the changing conditions would include a lot more snow than this. It's just kind of a wet, wet heavy snow, but it isn't that bad because it isn't that deep. But with the temperatures expected to drop, we might be holding on to our newly featured wonderland a bit longer. It's cold, it's nice, I, I like it when it's snowing, you know, but uh, I'm ready for spring. Now you likely noticed that the roads were wet earlier this afternoon, but at this point in time, most of them are just frozen, especially on side roads. If you're approaching a stop sign, you're going to want to pump those brakes extra early, and you're going to want to wait for Cameron Moreland to hear more about what we should expect with this wonderful weather. Keeping you connected in Green Bay, I'm Eric Kress with NBC 26. All right, Eric, thank you. And here's a live look right now at the WISDOT 511 map, the different colors telling the story of the current road conditions across our area. And as always, for the latest forecasts and school closing information, use our mobile app or visit NBC26.com. And we head to the state capitol now as a bill meant to help keep hundreds of local jobs at Kimberly Clark is moving forward. Yeah, the bill provides significant tax credits to the paper company. NBC 26's Matt Jarko joins us live in Madison with the latest. Matt? Brooke, if this bill passes, Kimberly Clark would get a tax incentive deal similar to Foxconn. Now, it all already has moved through the assembly, and later this month, we'll head to the Senate for a vote as well. Today, we spoke with the author of that bill, Appleton Senator Roger Roth. He spoke with the Committee on Economic Development, telling members this bill puts the state in a better position to negotiate with Kimberly Clark and try to save those up to 600 jobs. But some have criticized this bill saying it's bad economic policy and sends the wrong message to other companies. Roth, though, says the impact from Kimberly Clark makes this a worthwhile investment. We've been committed since the beginning of this process to doing anything in our power to make sure that we can protect and retain those 600 jobs and the 2,000 families they support. It sets a bad precedent. Uh, if you're a company that has, that's struggling in 
you know, changing demographics and you announce plans to leave, do, are all companies going to get the same deal? Now, this bill would have the state cover 17% of qualifying wages to Kimberly Clark if the company keeps employment at or above 93% of a base level set by the state. Roth hopes the Senate, again, will vote on this later this month. And if it does pass the state Senate, all it will need is Governor Walker's signature. However, even that won't guarantee that these plants stay open or that these jobs are preserved. The company today did not return a request for comment. In Madison, Matt Jarko, NBC 26. All right, thanks, Matt. Now, a public hearing is set for tomorrow to talk about the concerns on the amount of water Foxconn will be using for their new plant in Mount Pleasant. The company wants to tap about 7 million gallons per day from Lake Michigan. Racine's application estimates 2.7 million gallons, or 40% of that water won't return to the lake. And new information tonight, the National Transportation Safety Board releasing new information about the deadly plane crash in Indiana. That crash killing three people from our area. NBC 26's Cassandra Duval is live in the newsroom with more from that report. Cassandra. And John and Brooke, this report is the first time we're getting information about what happened February 22nd near Rossville, Indiana. You recall the crash killed Kiwani County dairy owner John Pagel, his son-in-law Stephen Witzpollick, and pilot Nathan Sari. According to the NTSB report, the crash happened around 7.30 p.m. about 60 miles northwest of Indianapolis. They were heading to Green Bay. The report says the pilot deviated from the assigned heading and altitude shortly after takeoff. When a controller asked him why, the pilot said the airplane was out of control. He turned the plane and said it was back to straight and level. He then was cleared to climb an altitude. He then told the controller he needed time to correct the plane, that there was difficulty with the trim. And it's at that point communication and radar contact was lost. Now, the report also states several witnesses reported hearing the airplane flying overhead. They described it as being very loud and the engine sound was steady up until they heard impact. That's when the plane crashed into a field. The NTSB says the final report for this crash will be finished in about 12 to 24 months. Live in the newsroom, Cassandra Duval, NBC 26. Cassandra, thank you, and testimony continues today in the case of the 2015 death of Michael Funk. Authorities say police mistakenly shot him as he tried to escape a hostage situation in Nina. Today, the man who allegedly held up the shop questioning responding officers, and NBC 26's Shane Gustafson is live from the Winnebago County Courthouse with more. Shane? Yeah, John and Brooke, Brian Flatoff spent quite some time questioning those officers and several witnesses here today in Winnebago County Court, despite a judge asking him to make his questions more direct and relevant to this murder case. Now, the judge stopped court several times to reiterate those statements to Flatoff, especially as he questioned the officers who responded to the hostage situation that day. The officers said they had a description of a man matching Flatoff as they made an emergency entrance into the building. But once they were inside, the officers say they felt ambushed with bullets coming from every direction. Flatoff argued since those officers couldn't see where what they were shooting, they had no right to fire their weapons. Officer Hoffer was to my right, leaning on the ground, grabbing his head, saying he was hit. At that point, uh, I feared for my life and my rest of my teammates, so I used tar target-specific directed fire towards individuals. Now, Flatoff also said officers might have had a hard time seeing inside that building since it was dark. The testimony is expected to continue tomorrow with more witnesses. The judge says that if it goes at the pace that it does today, this trial could last quite some time. We're keeping you connected tonight live in Oshkosh. Shane Gustafson, NBC 26. All right, thank you so much, Shane. Now, the FBI and Department of Homeland Security are now involved in the investigation of a deadly apartment explosion in Beaver Dam. They say the body of a 28-year-old man is still inside the apartment where the explosion happened because police say it's just too dangerous to go back inside. Beaver Dam police say they came across what they call unstable chemicals they're trying to identify. They also found bomb-making devices. That building and several others were evacuated yesterday still leaving residents displaced tonight. Police give the all clear after a suspicious package is found near a local elementary school this morning. Marion police say they found a package with a note attached saying it was a bomb. This on the steps of an address on Hillcrest Drive. That's near Marion Elementary, which was already closed for the day because of weather. 
The Brown Outagamie County Bomb Squad deciding the bomb note was indeed a hoax. Authorities say three more teens are behind bars tonight in connection with a social media threat directed at Fond du Lac High School. Police say the teens and a fourth teen living in Arkansas came up with a plan to post that threat on social media. Investigators say the suspects claim the post was meant as a joke with the goal of having school canceled yesterday. Still to come here tonight, saving lives. How a new emergency medical dispatch system is already making an impact. 